When you've reached the absolute height of popularity, the only way to go is down. And desperate times call for desperate measures. To stay relevant, you may have to add a kid to your cast, kill off a major character, or blow it all up and say it was just a dream. Worse still, you may have to jump the shark. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of Ninja Turtles, The Next Mutation. Just because you got older doesn't mean you have to abandon all the things you grew up loving. I loved fruity cereal when I was a kid and I still like it today, for a meal or for a snack. The good news is, today we have options. Magic Spoon brings you the taste of cereal from when you were a kid, but Magic Spoon is delicious, nutritious, and way healthier. It's a guilt-free treat you can eat at any time of the day. If you're trying to cut down on carbs or sugar, trying to eat healthier, the cereal you ate when you were 10 might not work for you today. Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. Also, only 140 calories. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. Look, it's my favorite, but Magic Spoon isn't just fruit-flavored. You can choose from the best-selling cocoa frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, and maple waffle, blueberry, cinnamon. They even drop limited edition flavors all the time. Magic Spoon ships to Canada and the UK. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. You can build your very own variety box and use my code TOYGALAXY for $5 off. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Click the link below and use the code TOYGALAXY for $5 off, or go to magicspoon.com slash toygalaxy to save $5 today. Thanks again to Magic Spoon. Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation is a live-action television series that ran 26 episodes from 1997 to 1998. It's the result of a bunch of extreme franchise-altering ideas getting turned down in favor of the only one that was literally better than nothing. A team of vigilante superheroes made up of four teenage mutant ninja turtles, totally unrelated by blood, live in the sewers of New York City. They were trained to fight evil by Splinter, a mutated rat who also acts as their surrogate father. Splinter dabbles in meditative astral projection, allowing his mind and spirit to leave his body for another plane of existence. One day, while taking an out-of-body stroll through the Dream Realm, Splinter receives a warning from his friend Chung Yi that the Dream Realm is becoming unstable and that dragons are coming. That's bad. Splinter soon encounters a new terrible evil creature called Dragon Lord, the leader of a clan of dragon-like humanoid warriors who were magically banished to a mystical realm thousands of years ago. Somehow they have found a way to return to the human world through the realm of dreams. That's worse. The only ones who can stand in their way are the four original Ninja Turtles, Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo, with special assistance from Chung Yi's adopted daughter, Venus de Milo, whom he taught the art of shinobi magic. Born and raised down the street in Chinatown, she also happens to be the long-lost fifth mutated turtle from the same incident that created the other four hero turtles and Splinter. This team is older, wiser, more experienced, and packed with 25% more turtle power than ever before. Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation was produced by Saban Entertainment for the Fox Kids Network, the producer and network of hit kids shows like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and X-Men the Animated Series. The Next Mutation was inspired by concepts that were potentially going to be featured in a fourth Ninja Turtles movie slated for release in 1996. Ninja Turtles co-creator Kevin Eastman was desperately trying to get another film out to keep the brand alive and the people who produced it employed. The Ninja Turtles burst onto the pop culture scene in 1984 with the publication of the first issue of the comic book. By 1987, they had a Saturday morning cartoon. By 1988, a line of action figures from Playmates. And by 1990, a feature film, a touring musical show, and a breakfast cereal. Two more movies in 1991 and 1993 were met with diminishing returns. The market was saturated with Ninja Turtle branded merchandise when it was suddenly overtaken by a new karate kicking phenomenon, Saban's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The turtles were on the verge of being replaced due to oldness. Ten years is a long time for any brand to stay popular. It's an eternity for a brand marketed to children. Most kids have a two to three year window of attention at best as they grow up and discover other interests. Mm. To have been so popular for so long speaks to the Ninja Turtles' ability to hold on to the original audience while engaging new fans. But after nearly 200 episodes over a decade of comics and hundreds of action figures that already explored nearly every iteration of the Turtles you could imagine, the creators were running out of ideas. 
Some of the concepts that were being considered for a fourth movie included the return of Super Shredder after his presumed death, Casey Jones with Electro Powers, evil April O'Neil, and second generation or next mutations for Splinter and the Turtles. Splinter would have become like the Hulk where he could voluntarily become a muscular super rat. Leonardo could activate metallic skin like Colossus from the X-Men. Michelangelo could create a human-like appearance around himself. Raphael would have been able to transform into Raptor Raph, a dinosaur inspired hybrid of himself, and Donatello would have had telekinetic and telepathic powers. As drastic as all that seems, as much as it borrows from other popular franchises of the day like X-Men and Jurassic Park, it was the addition of a fifth turtle named Kirby that would have changed the dynamic of the team the most. But it was that change that would ultimately survive as the film was never greenlit for production. After plans for the movie died, Saban Entertainment and Fox Kids approached Ninja Turtle creators Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird to see if they could salvage any of it for television. Did they have any ideas that could still work for a series? Well, at least one idea. Eastman and Laird proposed the idea of adding a fifth turtle to the team. Saban liked it, but said they would only do it if it was a female turtle. Four guys and a girl, a formula that, in their experience, had been very successful. Eastman was on board. Laird was a team player. Oh. Despite his reservations, the cartoon had run its course and they were facing the prospect of the Turtles no longer being in theaters or on television. A certain death sentence for a kid's brand, not to mention the degree to which their own company, Mirage Studios, would have to cut back financially. Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation kept the working title of the film and, according to promotional materials, would act as a continuation of the animated series. However, in execution, it was more of a continuation of the movies, if for no other reason than it was live action. The Turtles' abandoned train station home set was relocated and used as a primary location in the series. The Turtles' costumes were slightly redesigned, their weapons modified. Instead of two swords, Leonardo had one. Donatello's bow staff is now metal, and thanks to the intention to air the show in places where nunchucks are against the law, Michelangelo was given tonfas. Shredder is back as regular Shredder instead of Super Shredder, commanding the Foot Clan, but Casey Jones and April O'Neil are noticeably absent. Raphael has a motorcycle and the team has a turtle Humvee as a nod to the battle wagon from previous versions of the mythology. Most importantly, the turtles are now 18 years old, legally adults, capable of voting and being held responsible for their own decisions. And, as clearly stated in the very first episode, they are not, and have never been, related by blood. They are brothers in a team loyalty sense, not actual genetics. Because we don't want it to get weird now that there is a female turtle involved, a potential romantic interest for all four hero turtles, truly the most reasonable romantic subplot introduced to the series since it was originally created. Fully unexplored territory. Be there for the excitement. Delicious. Be there for the fun. Be there for the action. The live action TV series. I love being a Ninja Turtle! Ninja Turtles, the next mutation. Anybody ready for pizza? Coming this fall from Saban Entertainment. Cut. Great. The turtle's origin story was not changed, but merely given an additional previously unknown angle. Instead of four turtles and a rat being affected by the canister of mutagen, it was now five turtles and a rat. The fifth turtle was accidentally separated from the group and found in Chinatown, where it was raised by shinobi master Chung Yi. She was renamed by the Turtles during one of their first encounters with her. She had just defeated some foot soldiers and was holding the head of a broken statue. Like most nicknames in our world, the in-narrative Venus de Milo joke stuck, and that's what they called her, whether she actually liked it or not. Chung Yi had named her Mei Pei Chi and trained her in Kung Fu and the mystical art of shinobi magic. Yes, shinobi basically means ninja, and yes, it's a Japanese, not Chinese word. But don't get hung up on details like that if you're going to allow for talking turtle people who live in the sewer and eat pizza. Maybe Splinter and Chung Yi had conversations about it over the years because they were friends and knew what each other was doing. It's really, really not important. What is important is that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were entering a new era of storytelling positioned to compete with other live-action superhero ninja franchises instead of lapsing into obscurity. Further emphasized by their crossover with the actual Power Rangers. A dream crossover for some. For others, the acknowledgement of what the Turtles had become as a brand. They were part of the same media and marketing approach as brands like Power Rangers, Big Bad Beetleborgs, Masked Rider, and Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. On the same network as X-Men the Animated Series. Playmates was on board with the new direction releasing a full wave of action figures in 1997 with the four original Turtles, Splinter, Venus, Shredder, and an elite guard. The new Big Bad villain Dragonlord and a member of his 
his followers called the Rank. Thunder Thrashers put the five turtles in different outfits and gave them projectile firing skateboards. Raph got his street cycle vehicle. The turtles battle wagon, a Humvee called the Mutant Marauder, was released, as well as roleplay toys like Leo's Katana Sword. 1998 saw a second wave of figures recoloring the five turtles and adding snap-on camo armor, or turtle flage. New figures for big game hunter and turtle nemesis Bone Steel, Vampire Vam Me, and tough guy talking gorilla Silver. The four core turtles and Dragonlord return in deluxe turtle flage sets, and the whole thing is capped off by two of the most 90s designs that have ever 90 Leo and Don with their turtle flage camo blitz cycle and hydro skimmer, respectively. Not a lot of merchandise beyond the toys, some activity books, ice cream treats, a sticker album. In 1997, Tiger Electronics released a handheld LCD game. You control the turtles in hand to hand combat as they fight Dragonlord or drive the mutant marauder Humvee. For a while, there was talk that a video game was in development by Playmates Interactive Entertainment for the PlayStation, but that never materialized, likely due to the amount of time it takes to develop a game versus the short run of the television series itself. Despite the intention to bring back Casey Jones and April O'Neil in Season 2, Ninja Turtles The Next Mutation was cancelled after just 26 episodes. Perhaps it wasn't given enough time to find its audience, perhaps it was clear right out of the gate who the intended audience was, and they just weren't interested anymore. Many will point to the low-budget slapstick nature of the show that relies more on terrible puns than it does on actual ninjas fighting with their ninja weapons as the reason it failed. Others will lay the entire blame on the very idea that you would add a fifth turtle, much less make that turtle a girl, a concept that for many strayed so far away from the core as to betray what the essence of the mythology was to begin with. The term jump the shark was coined in 1985 to describe the moment at which a beloved series or franchise or anything really has overstayed its welcome. The point at which the desire to stay relevant has resulted in tricks or gimmicks or stunts to provide a quick hit of interest in the hope that it will bring the audience back or at the very least prolong the inevitable. Jump the Shark is a reference to an episode of the 1974 television sitcom Happy Days in which the most popular character, Arthur the Fonz Fonzarelli, must prove his bravery by jumping over a shark while on water skis. Most people remember this as a moment that a once beloved TV show finally hit a point where there was no salvaging it, the point at which the series ended. However, those people are wrong. Happy Days jumped the shark in its third season in 1977. It would go on to be a number one rated show for several more years, airing new episodes through 1984. For whatever the term means today, it was not the end for the series, not by a long shot. So um, I water skied and jumped the shark and then came jump the shark. That was the, or that was the episode. Now you have to understand. We were number one for like six years after that, so um, nobody else thought we jumped the shark. So, uh, you know, but listen, it's America and the man should make money. He should write a book and have a game show. The inclusion of Venus de Milo is frequently pointed to as the low point in the Turtles franchise, a desperate attempt to stay relevant, a trick, a gimmick, a stunt. It is a despised deviation from the norm. The people actually making the show on a daily basis were blindsided by Fox's decision to cancel. They received no advance warning. They attempted to keep the spirit of Venus de Milo alive through blog posts after the production shut down. The posts were written in Venus's voice, referencing things that were going on in the Turtles' adventures in other ongoing media like the comics unrelated to the next mutation. They attempted to develop her relationships with the other characters and try to maintain her association with the mythology. Until 2000, 2008, when Kevin Eastman sold his share of ownership to his partner, Peter Laird. The Venus blog posts were taken down and now only exist as memories. But it wasn't entirely Venus's fault. The next mutation was canceled because Fox wasn't seeing enough profit for a show they were financing. They didn't own the concept. The ratings weren't the highest, but they would have been enough to continue if there had been more money for Fox. After the cancellation of The Next Mutation, Fox and Saban debuted a new original show in the fall of 1998 about four knights with magical armor, three guys and a girl called Mystic Knights of Tirnanog. For the Turtles, it was the first time since 1986 that there was no new cartoons on television and no movies in or on their way to theaters. It would be five more years until the next animated series and nine more years until the next movie. In 2012, Shout Factory brought The Next Mutation home on DVD. Volume 1 was released in March with 13 episodes. The remaining 13 followed in October. As of this video, the series is available for purchase digitally. However, there are no official sites to stream it. You can find several episodes here on YouTube unofficially. In 2009, Peter Laird sold the Ninja Turtles franchise to Nickelodeon. In 2011, Saban, after having sold Saban Entertainment to Disney in 2001, bought back all of his shows, including The Next Mutation. In 2018, all of those Saban rights were sold to Hasbro. Hasbro, till all are one.
<laughs> Venus de Milo has not been a part of Turtle Media since the next mutation. Kevin Monroe, the director of the 2007 animated feature film simply titled TMNT, related his experience with Peter Laird and the possibility of using Venus, quote, there's absolutely no mention of Venus de Milo, the female turtle. You can't even joke about that with Peter. It's just one of those things that he hates with a passion. It is unlikely that she is ever coming back. However, fans and ownerships change over time. No marketing department is so principled as to never attempt to touch the concept again. If NECA Toys can release a box set of the Ninja Turtles from their live concert tour series that is embraced by fans, there's a chance that enough time has passed that nostalgia can grant Venus a second chance as well. Because her creation and inclusion in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles wasn't the end of the franchise. Like Happy Days before, the Turtles have had incredible lasting success long after their jump the shark moment. So maybe it's time for a new term to describe this specific type of situation. A character asked to save an already sinking ship to attempt to refresh a franchise that so many in the larger audience had already moved on from. The actual Venus de Milo, the statue, was discovered in a hidden cave on an island in the Aegean Sea in 1820. It was named after a Roman goddess, even though it is a Greek sculpture. It's Aphrodite, if it's anyone. Broken, misplaced, forcibly renamed. A more appropriate name for the turtle than it seemed. Had it been under better circumstances, Venus might be a core part of the very healthy franchise today. Looking back, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as a franchise didn't jump the shark. They buried Venus de Milo. Perhaps one day she will be accidentally discovered again. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe. If you're not already a subscriber, thank you very much to those of you who already are. Thank you again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard, we started streaming on Twitch. Find us at twitch.tv slash toygalaxy. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon or become a YouTube channel member and let us know in the comments down below if you watched The Next Mutation, if you think there's a way for Venus to come back into the world of the turtles, or if that's an idea best left locked in a secret cave on the island in the Aegean Sea. I have no dog in this fight. I can see why people don't like her. I can see the appeal of opening up a new branch of storytelling for a franchise that's going on almost 40 years. What I will say is that alternate timelines are hot right now, and there's no reason she can't pop through a portal somewhere and just join the turtles midstream. Or Spider-Man. Man. Put her in the MCU. Heck, I don't care. Drop her in the next Superman movie. Nothing matters anymore. Lego Dimensions had the Simpsons, the A-Team, E.T., the Goonies, and Harry Potter. <laughs> There's no lines. Cut. <laughs>